So welcome everybody. Uh, we'll get started in just a minute. Uh, if you can just hang out, give everyone another minute or two to join us. Okay, well, we'll go ahead and get started. Um, if anyone else shows up, um, we'll let them in, they can join us. Um, thank you so much for being here tonight. Um, tonight we're gonna talk about the Driving Park Pool, Maryland Pool, and Barnett Spray Park. And since we have a small group tonight, I'm gonna change things up. Um, if you could just post in the chat uh, which facility you're here to talk about. Um, I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Um, and then when we get to the, the part of the presentation where we're talking about the specific facilities, um, we can jump right into what, what most interests you. Um, so if you need to leave early, here's some info for you. Um, after the meeting tonight, we're gonna post the presentation on columbusaquatics.org. I'm assuming you've been there if you made it here tonight. Um, we'll have the recorded presentation and meeting notes posted there as well um, in a few days. So we will uh, send out an email when that's ready to go. And then if you haven't already, um, if you go to this website here, this Gov Delivery website, which we're gonna put in the chat, um, you can just click there. And if you sign up and choose the Aquatics Capital Improvement Plan updates, uh, you'll get all the emails on the project if you're not already. So a little bit of um, housekeeping, um, stay on mute if you're not talking, we have everyone muted currently, uh, but don't worry, you'll get a chance to speak later. Um, use the chat feature to ask questions and provide feedback. We'll be monitoring that. And then also go ahead and write down which facility you'd like to talk about in there as well so we can make sure that we um, get right to it. And then if you need to leave, there's the end button or the leave button in the corner. And so we're not having any breakout rooms tonight. We'll just all stay in this room here together. So let's start with a poll. Um, how many people are on this Zoom call tonight? Uh, you'll see a poll pop up and you can just make your selection there. All right, looks like someone's here with one person and someone's here with more than seven people. So that's great. We'll have a few more polls throughout the evening um, and they'll run just like that. So we have a short agenda for you. We're gonna talk a little bit about the history of the current aquatics programming. Uh, we'll introduce you to the process that we're undertaking. We'll talk about some findings to date uh, of the aquatics programming and of these three specific facilities. Um, and then we're gonna skip the breakout rooms. We'll just stay here and have a conversation and then we'll have some final thoughts. So here's the people you see on the call today, the people who've been working behind the scenes on the project. Um, we are architects, recreation and parks experts, and then the city of Columbus recreation and parks staff as well. So Columbus now has uh, 16 aquatic facilities with the addition of the Linden Spray Park that opened last month. Um, and here you can see where they're clustered throughout town. Uh, tonight, we're gonna be talking about the east side of town. Uh, so specifically Maryland Pool, Driving Park Pool and Barnett Spray Park. So something you may be wondering is why are we doing this? Um, and so uh, Columbus Recreation and Parks recognizes that the aquatic facilities need improvements to better serve you. And so they're developing a long-term uh, plan, this master plan, this aquatics capital improvement plan to make sure that they're investing properly in the aquatics division over the coming years. And so we're having this round of public meetings and we'll have a second round of public meetings to take place later this summer, early fall. Um, and that's to map out this long-term plan um, that's starting now with uh, the renovation of Glenwood and Windsor Pools. 
And some of the goals of this uh, aquatics capital improvement plan are to upgrade and expand the existing aquatic facilities with a focus on health and wellness. Um, and one of the main goals is to divert, sorry, promote diversity, equity, and inclusion. And so we're looking at the city as a whole, and then we're looking at the sites individually as well. Uh, we wanna increase access to parks and aquatic facilities, promote safety and security, um, and also uh, make sure that the city has a sustainable operating revenue generation uh, from these facilities. And so the first step of this is where we are now. Uh, we need your feedback. It is vital to this process and is helping us shape the final plan. And so we really appreciate you being here tonight to talk to us. The plan overall is a five-step process. And as you can see, we're still in step one. So we're gathering information and we're gonna come back to you, like I said, uh, late summer, early fall um, about these facilities again. Um, and we're looking for more feedback. We're always open to hear your feedback. And so part of this first phase is uh, collecting data, reviewing existing drawings, reviewing the existing facilities, uh, studying demographics, um, and then assessing the adequacy of the facilities through surveys, which hopefully you all have taken, uh, these meetings, and then our own observations being on site. And so um, you know, your feedback is really vital to this entire first phase. Uh, driving park pool, uh, we've set a, a boundary or a radius of about two miles around each of the facilities. Um, and within that boundary, you can see there that driving park serves 66,000 residents uh, with an average household size of 2.3 and a median age of 37 years. And so when we, when we break out the age distribution, you can see how it breaks out in the pie chart on the right. Uh, we like to look at that 17 and under demographic to see um, where those ages shake out because uh, different ages require different amenities and different programming in each of the sites. And so, as you can see for driving park, uh, it's a pretty steady age distribution up until about age 15 when it starts to drop off. And so we've done the same for Maryland, uh, median age of 34.3, service area of over 52,000 and a slightly smaller average household size of 2.1. And so looking again at that youth age distribution, uh, you can see it, it uh, less than three is the most there. And then it steadily goes down uh, as you get closer to 18. And then finally, Barnett has a slightly older median age of 36.9, uh, average household size of about 2.4, and then um, a good size service area there of 66,000. We got a lot of folks going to Barnett. And then the youth age distribution, again, you can see uh, stays pretty steady up until about age 14, 15, and then it starts to drop off again. And so that'll help us when we're selecting amenities. We have another poll question for you. How many times do you visit your pool or spray park on average in the summer? We'll have that pop up. We have options of once a month, a few times a month, once a week, a few times a week, every day, or we haven't visited. So it looks like a few times a week. So hopefully you've all been to the website and have taken our survey. Um, we're gonna highlight just a few survey questions from that survey. Uh, one of them that we like to look at is how far do you travel to use the aquatic facility uh, that you use most? And you can see that the majority of people fall between that five minute and 20 minute range. One of the questions asked, uh, what type of pool user you are? And so we had a lot of options there, but the overwhelming majority use the pools for recreational swimming or fun. Um, next is the children's use, lap swimming, and then swimming lessons. Uh, one of our questions was in regards to what are the most significant community benefits to public swimming and aquatics. And so we gave quite a few options there. You were able to select three. Uh, overwhelmingly, it was swimming lessons to develop swimming as a life skill. 
Year-round exercise and healthy living was another top choice. And then a place to cool off during hot, hot summer months. And I know this graph is a little busy, um, but we, we had a question about different actions that the city's considering to improve aquatic facilities or services. And so we asked people to indicate how supportive they would be. And so the orange is most supportive and the light blue is likely supportive. So you can see that uh, people were very supportive of increasing the swim season, um, of upgrading pool houses and bath houses, providing additional shade, um, having warm water for showers and having interactive family-friendly play features. And so this is all information that is gonna help us as we start to move forward in uh, coming up with conceptual designs for uh, potential facilities. We had an open-end question on the survey about what other amenities you would use at the site. And so uh, the larger the font here, the more often the words were used. And so some of the biggest ones there were showers, uh, snack bar, hot tub, sauna, splash pad, um, lots of good ideas here. And so taking all of that into account, um, we've put together some examples of different amenities and programming that may be offered in the future. Uh, we've divided them into four different categories. Uh, so that's adventure, sports, fitness, and program. And so we're gonna show you some options of these, but first we wanna know what programming that's offered do you currently use? You may need to scroll down to see them all. Uh, swim team or stroke clinic, dive clinic, swim lessons, water aerobics, therapeutic recreation, water fitness, open lap swim, recreational open swim, master swim, rental capabilities, or lifeguarding and water safety instructor classes. All right, so it looks like swim team or stroke clinic, open lap swim, recreational open swim, master swim, so lots of swimming. Thank you for sharing that. So as we're looking at trends, uh, the first trend we were gonna look at today was sports. And so there's water volleyball, water handball, water basketball, and then um, there's a product like Wibbits, which is a movable uh, ninja course that can move from facility to facility. It's inflatable um, and it's easy to move and store. When we're looking at aquatic trends, there's fitness, and that could be things like aqua cycling, a separate lap pool, uh, aqua yoga balance program, or water aerobics. And in terms of uh, potential additional programming, there's different health and wellness or fitness programs. There's dive-in movies. Uh, there's things like log rolling that can be offered. And so those are all pool related, but if we're looking at the spray parks, um, there's a lot of different features that can be incorporated there. And so one, um, we've labeled a few here. We have inclusive play or universal design features. Um, that makes the, the splash pad accessible to children of all abilities. Uh, we have play structures shown on the top left there. There's features like dumping buckets that fill and either fall on their own or they can be maneuvered by the users. Uh, we can incorporate natural elements into the spray parks as well, as you can see on the lower right with the rocks uh, shooting water. There's spray funnels that are sort of shot like cannons. Uh, there's ground sprays, similar to some of the fountains around town. There's inward sprays that create um, spray tunnels, basically. And there's items like on the right that show the rain showers uh, coming from a natural element again. And then finally, there's different versions of shaded structures and seating areas, uh, some more natural in appearance, uh, others including picnic tables and benches, um, and the shade structures can be 
um, canvas type structures over the splash pad area, or you could have them over the seating areas as well. So taking all of that into account, uh, when you're thinking of the pool specifically, what programming would you like to see offered at the pool? We'll have a poll question here. So again, you may need to scroll down. You can choose three. Early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim hours. Swim lessons for all ages. Water aerobics, health and wellness. Water sports, dive in movies. Wibbits course, paddleboard yoga, aqua bikes, and scuba lessons are all laid out there. All right. So health and wellness got the most votes, but also early morning lap swim or dedicated adult swim, swim lessons for all ages, water aerobics and dive in movies got a vote. And then thinking of the amenities that I showed you for splash pads, what would you like to see offered at Barnett Spray Park? I'll have another poll. We need to scroll down. We have inclusive play and universal design elements, play structure, dumping buckets, spray funnels, rain showers, inward sprays, ground sprays, natural elements, shaded structures, and seating. So it looks like inclusive play and universal design elements, dumping buckets and seating were all desired. Oops, sorry about that. There you go. And then finally, how do you believe Columbus Recreation and Parks should financially support these new amenities and programming? We'll have a poll there for you for reference. Uh, the 12 other municipalities with public pools in Franklin County, uh, the average for adult daily admission is 1010 and for daily child admission is uh, $8.90. There we have a few options. I'll give you a minute to read through them all. Give you another few seconds. So it looks like uh, vote for um, having entry price for children 17 and under a dollar and adults would range from two to five dollars. Um, adding additional membership opportunities with perks like members only swim times or faster facility entry and then providing partnership opportunities for businesses. Thanks for your input on those. So now we'd like to talk specifically about uh, these facilities and what you would like to see happen there. Um, I know we showed you a lot. Um, I'm sure you have some of your own ideas as well. So I would like to open it up um, to you. Um, which facility should we start with? Oh, can we unmute Kyle? Yes. <laughs> Sorry if you were trying to talk there. Yeah, I was just, I uh, just put on the chat, uh, 
chat, but I just felt I had to put it in the chat also because that that was the reason I was just very happy I was able to give you the information what I found in that uh, Councilman Huntsaker for Jasper, Indiana that I gave the messenger an email about the how the pool pool dimensions or that's how I found the pool dimensions. Yeah, it's very helpful. Welcome. Which pool is your home pool? Do you use the aquatic center and some of the other facilities as well? Um, the, just the aquatic center, but I go to Westerville JC pool. It's an older pool. It's not high. Highlands is the newer pool that's owned by the city, but Westerville JC pools the uh, their own nonprofit. It's been around since 1958. It's across from Westerville South High School and Blendon Middle School. And then, then I have another indoor pool, uh, pool, pool uh, have a couple. I use the North YMCA I've been using up on Carl and Sandwood Place. And then, and then hopefully this fall will Franklin County Board of DD will reopen the West Central School Pool for uh, Monday night open swim and also Special Olympics. The, I can tell you their pool, pool at West Central School Pool, their pool, temp pool water is between 9 to 92 degrees because it's a school with people with disabilities. They need the therapeutic water. Some people call it bath water. <laughs> So it sounds like you use a lot of indoor facilities. Yeah, and then the, yes, and then the Westville JC pool is my summer summer outdoor home uh, because the last year they couldn't offer memberships because of the pandemic. They had to pay uh, people would had to pay fifteen dollars for fifty minutes of lap swimming or seven dollars to use the 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 family pool with the water slide. Mm -hmm. but they're offering the memberships i'm glad they did that this year and some the, but they're still charging 15 dollars for laps from that's for outside siders but i'll probably may be able to still get in the lap pool area without paying the extra 15 dollars we'll figure that out well, since it sounds like you've been to a lot of different indoor facilities and you shared with us um, your thoughts about pool size, the number of lanes. Yes. Um, what else about those facilities is good or bad to you? What things about those do you like? I just like the being around the people and offering more pro programs than I do. And, uh, and a couple years ago, I even got to swim at the Columbus School for Girls pool. They have a nice indoor pool. And they built it a little over 10 years ago. And it's an eight lane, 25 yard pool with a couple of diving boards in there. And their deep end is 12 feet deep. And then there's a sound system underwater for people who are synchronized swimmers. Wow. Yeah, because the, and then also I've swam at the St. Charles indoor pool. And, it's only six feet deep and I was trying to get the athletic director and their principal to build a new pool but no dice yet but uh, St. Charles is an all boys uh, Catholic school and, mm -hmm. and Columbus school for girls is an all girls school but but I think the Columbus school for girls was one of the better indoor pools of, and I still can't forget about the McCorkle Aquatic Pavilion it, because it's 50 meters long and can be divided by two 25-yard pools or, or 25-meter pools. And they also have other indoor areas, a couple of six-lane indoor pools at the RPAC and stuff. And, and Where is McCorkle? Is that the one by Riverside Hospital? No, that's the Ohio State University across from... Ohio Stadium that was built oh. in, in 2005 and 2006 that replaced the old Larkins Hall. They've hold, they've hosted uh, women's NCAA's uh, 2008 and 2018, which I volunteered for. 
men's NCAAs in 2010. They've hosted a couple of USA swimming meets like Grand Prix in 2012. The Tier Pro Swim Series uh, in 2018. And then they've held a couple of men's and women's Big Ten championships. And it used to be the home of the state swim meet for Special Olympics Ohio until it got moved to the to Bowling Green State University in Bowling Green. It's a, still a fast pull, but I, I've been still trying to do a campaign through change.org is to return the state swim meet to, back to Columbus. That's still my ultimate goal. And then also, and they, they also used to have a long course Special Olympics uh, uh, swim event at the state summer games until that the got this content and a couple of years ago at Worthington pool I've swam in and numerous times indoor for uh used to be for swim or walk for diabetes but back to the Worthington pool 2019 the more Corco is being retiled they had to uh, have the long course swimming event in a 25 yard pool at the time and it was so hot in so so I felt like a sauna, even on a hot day, you felt like a sauna inside and out. Was it due to the pool itself being too warm or the building not being it was properly just building. conditioned? It was okay. just a building because of, it felt like a sauna in Worthington pool. The, since McCorkle was being retailed and Special Olympics while well, made so many chain, changes, I'm keeping in touch with some staff members in Special Olympics Ohio trying to get it back, but 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 Special Olympics Ohio and BGSU still has a law, a contract for seven years to host the swimming, basketball, and the competitive chair of events, which they held last year before the pandemic started. That was the last event Special Olympics Ohio ever held in the state and. I enjoyed every minute of being in Bowling Green and Northwest Ohio. I was even on the ABC station in Toledo um, on the 11 o'clock news and Saturday morning news. Wow. Yeah, but good uh, memories. Thank you. Um, and, uh, but my heart will always still be for McCork the McCorkle for Special Olympics and and hopefully I'll be back volunteering at the swim meets too. I volunteer at Ohio State swim meets and the other big events like the NCAA's, uh, NCAA's, uh, Big Tens, USA Swimming. I've even volunteered at two U USA, used to be USA Synchro, now it's USA Artistic Swim swimming when they held the college synchronized swimming championships under by USA Art artistic swimming uh, because it's not an NCAA sp sport but but Ohio State are big on synchronized swimming and that's one of the few varsity sports they get scholarships on while others are club teams and I don't know what's happening with Stanford they talk about cutting synchronized swimming hopefully they got it they uh, may have found a way to keep it i don't know but it's uh, i'm giving you my his the history of uh of aquatics in columbus and stuff it's okay that's all right so is there anything about those facilities um that really sticks out to you as something that's unique that somebody's doing since you've been to so many of them, I feel like you're in a good position to tell us about this. Um, what are they offering? What kind of amenities? Do they have really good changing rooms? Yes, are they offering uh, yes, that is what great is it? changing rooms, great uh, changing rooms because I was never a, uh, a fan of the Columbus Aquatic Center when they used to put clothes in. And then for lockers, you had to put a, a a quarter or two quarters to use their lock lockers, but the uh, um, McCorkle, the YMCA, uh, great changing facility, 
facilities in McCorkle and then the West Road JC Fold, despite it's a small locker, uh, but good locker size for to just put shorts and t-shirts and underwear, but just one shower and three changing areas, but still, still great pool, pool but the, and then the West Central School Pool is a, has small, a couple of lock, lockers and a few showers, but still not enough locker space at West Central School, but the, but McCorkle, YMCA, um, great changing for, facilities and even with the and that's what I like about the about change changing air uh, taking a shower and getting the chlorine off and uh, and even if you stop to bring your own towel that's okay because the YNCA eliminated that because they wanted because they didn't want to pay for they wanted to try to be green about the instead of washing their own towels they want people to bring their own towels and mm -hmm. I hope I've been a help with giving you a lot of in in inform, information and I'm still the and I know next week will be Columbus. I oh, will get more with that because, uh, and I wrote that. Well, we can talk more about it next week about to, uh, building a new pool to replace the Columbus Aquatic Center and uh, and try to get more in indoor pools around Columbus area because Columbus has lagged behind since it's been grow growing we're the largest city in Ohio and stuff mm -hmm. yeah we appreciate all of your comments and and thanks for sharing all of your experience with us you're welcome well then I think we can close out now um you know, Kyle, I appreciate you being with us. Uh, you have our email address if you think of anything else before next week. Um, we've yes, seen your comments uh, and, and we'll make sure that that's incorporated and discussed next week as well. I appreciate that. And I've even done it on the Columbus uh, um, Rec and Parks in uh, Messenger too. Oh, on uh, like Facebook or something? Yeah. Yeah, okay. If I can't get it through email, because sometimes my computer can be unpredictable at times, and sometimes my internet, uh, but my internet speeds improve better. And uh, but I'm just happy to about the putting people still need a spray a spray park, and uh, and I'm just very happy about telling you about the great locker f facilities at YMCA's. McCorkles and other the and Upper Arlington is supposed to be opening up their new high school with a 10 lane 25 yard pool. That's correct. I don't know if that's uh, open to the public, but I'll uh, we'll find out from up uh, Arlington Parks and yeah, Rec. And then also, they're supposed to be building a new community center at Kingsdale. Lots happening. Yes. Exciting times. Well, we appreciate your enthusiasm. Thank and thanks you. For, thanks for being here. I'm sure we'll see you next week. Um, Definitely. If you need anything in the meantime, please email us. Of um, course. And we'll let, we'll let you know when the presentation is up. Well, I will do that. All right. Well, thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank Have a good you. Night. Bye bye. Thanks. Bye. Good night. Thanks, everyone.